On the Lion locomotive, the main driving wheels have 18 spokes. The front driving wheels have 16 spokes. The trailing wheels have 11 spokes. And the tender wheels have 10 spokes. It's time to machine out the driving wheel spokes. It's a bit of an anticlimax though. I machined them out on the CNC. <laughs> Sorry. This is one of the 18 spoke uh, driving wheels uh, straight off the CNC. So it's not a bad result. The roots of the spokes need to be filed to get to the finished profile. And there's still a lot of work to do to the face of the spokes. Uh, these need to be radiused. So we'll be doing that later on. So the next job is to machine the tread profile, so that's what we're going to do next. I've also done the uh, trailing wheel, this is an 11 spokes. And I've also done the tender wheels, which are 10 spokes. I'm using a piece of scrap steel as a fixture plate. I drilled this and I uh, locked it in a piece of bar. And I've turned this to be a location spigot. To fit the wheel and face this on the same setting so it's nice and square and flat. So it's just a case of locating the wheel and it's a nice fit there as a zero clearance fit almost. I'm just using T nuts for nuts. nice and tight. This is the profile I'm aiming for. So I'm initially going to rough it out to this profile. As I'm only holding it on with one central uh, bolt I'm just going to take very light cuts uh, half a millimeter on diameter uh, each pass. So it's going to take a little while but better to be safe than sorry. So just touch on the face, set to zero. Touch on the face that way, set to zero. Close enough. So now I'm going to just rough out the radius in the corner. To do this I've uh, just taken a normal uh, turning tool and high speed steel and ground a 1.8mm radius and just to check the accuracy I uh, checked it under a digital microscope. Yeah, just take the sharp edges off. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll machine them all like that in a roughed out state and then we'll have to put them back in for finishing off. The next part of the operation is to put the 12 degree angle on. So I've got my compound slide set to about 12 degrees. Just move the tool into the corner of the radius. Check my dials, set to zero. So I'm aiming for 2.5 millimeters at the end of the radius, more or less. So I think it's about there. So it's around 2.6. I think that's okay. We'll leave it at that. So I've put the dial gauge on uh, the side of the saddle. And set it to zero so that I can get repeatability and do the other three wheels exactly the same. The next operation is to turn the two degree angle. I've set the compound slide over two degrees just referring to the engraved graduations on the machine. But I want this to be fairly accurate so I've set up the DTI. So for one full turn of the uh, longitudinal hand wheel on the lathe, I can measure the displacement using the digital dial test indicator. So we need to do a bit of uh, quick infant school first day trigonometry. So 18 millimeters travel of the carriage should give me 0.63 millimeters uh, travel on the dial test indicator. Okay, so I'll just set the dial to zero on the carriage. We might want to take up any backlash and adjust the slide to get zero on the dial. And move the carriage one full turn. And I can't quite believe it, that's 0.63 just over just going off the graduated, off the engraved dial. I'll put on a point four of a millimetre. Let's start cutting. So I'm going to lock the carriage there and just, it's got to stay there. And I've had to move until this job's finished. Okay, so that's about halfway across, which would be about right. Call another point four. That's point four in diameter.
Okay, I think that's good enough. So the plan is to do all the wheels exactly the same up to this stage. So I'll keep the lathe cowards locked and I'll do the other three wheels just using the dials on the machine, the compound, the cross, uh, the cross slide and the compound slide dials and just do them all exactly the same. And that should be fine. Okay, the next uh, job is to put a small chamfer on the corner here. So again, I'll do each one in turn. I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay, happy with that. Set the cross slide to zero. And then just do them all the same. The last operation is to put the radius on the outer diameter of the wheel. So on the edge of the wheel here it's about two millimeters so that would be a millimeter radius on each side. So I'm going to use a radius milling cutter. This tool has been ground with a one millimeter corner radius. So the idea is to just come in the back of the wheel here put a radius on and then put this at an angle and come in and put a radius on the other side. Now this is for a 90 degree corner and this has got an angle of 12 degrees so I'll not get a full radius but I'll get near enough and then we'll just finish it off with a file or emery paper. I'm just eyeballing this. If I put a piece of white paper underneath I can see better where the cutting tool is. So that should be about there, so I can feed it in there. So the cutting edge on this tool is now on the underside, so I need to go in reverse. Okay. It just remains to polish up the machine surfaces. Uh, for this I just use a piece of uh, emery tape. This is 280 grit. Um, it's on a piece of wood with some felt in between to give it a bit of a cushion. We've got three chuck jaws flying around so we need to be careful we don't uh, get in the way of those.
Okay, happy with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.